Kushida is narcissistic. No, not like Koenji. It's deeper than that. Kushida's hidden self, in which she doesn't show anyone, is revealed in Volume 1, Chapter 8.6. End episode 3 of Clash of the Elite, shown as her screaming out insults and wishing death upon Harukita. This moment cemented in everyone's mind that Kushida has a lot more to her than she lets on. Two seasons or many volumes later, you think you understand her, right? Wrong. We barely have scratched the surface of this. Kushida Kiko's narcissism was brought forth by the excessive validation and satisfaction she felt from the praise she had received from everyone. As she grew up, she was always getting spotlight because she won, giving her the satisfaction. Eventually, as she grew older, she found more of a limit to this validation when others started to outshine her. After all, if you're even second, you won't get the same spotlight as the person who came first. As she found her limit in academics or sports, she had to find a new way to become the person in the spotlight. This grew to doing things that other people simply wouldn't do. Being ideal and perfect as a human being, a role model student, doing the things you simply don't get asked to do but are helpful nonetheless. Now, not only the factors before about the satisfaction of being in the spotlight, but now as this keeps going on, this brought upon more need for validation after working hard to do everything no one else wanted to do, so it's just extra validation she needed. This eventually accumulated into something more twisted than just a simple want for validation, but genuine stress, and what could essentially be considered a time bomb. This time bomb, if it ever were to hit its limit and blow up in the future, would only hurt everyone around her and even herself. Kushida's time bomb consists of an ability she gains from the image she built up and is perceived by her peers, which is weaponizing the information she has. Because she became the most trustworthy girl, because of the image people have of her, they share secrets with her. She uses this as a weapon because of how valuable these are to people which the power she holds is enough to destroy an entire class. She also enjoys the feeling of withholding such information due to the ecstasy of being needed, of being trusted. Her narcissism becomes more complex, however, when we dive into the details of this narcissism. And she generally is someone to be looked at, unlike Koenji Rokusuke, which in his case, his narcissism is used for comedic effect. Subscribe to me if you love Classroom Elite. I will be bringing more videos like this in the future. Also, I want to hit 10k subscribers by the end of the year, somehow. First, let's look at the most well-known part of Kushida. Those two sides, commonly shown with her, and the two-faced she is known as. Which is the fake self, which is perceived by others, and the real self. Kushida falls under the grandiose type of narcissism. She shows a great level of sociability that can be perceived as someone being highly extroverted, and her fake self is depicted and perceived as a typical popular extrovert. She's talkative, energetic, forward, and outgoing, but she isn't as assertive as the typical image of an extrovert. However, the real self of Kushida shows a great disliking to the people around her, due to the stress she accumulates day by day, giving up the image to maintain the perception of her peers about her. The need to receive validation from others is something intertwined to her determination in every single action she has taken up to this very point. That can be described as her trying to attain her hedonism. To describe what hedonism is, it is commonly understood as a theory that the behavior we humans display is primarily to determined by the desire to increase the pleasure we feel and decrease the pain simultaneously. As much as she loathes to keep her full feelings hidden, she has to keep them hidden to not upset and destroy everything she has built so far. She has gone up thousands of stairs, yet sees no end to them, and has long stopped seeing the ground she started from. So, she cannot look back and keep going up the stairs without even counting how many she had gone up, or how many she could still go up. With each step, a little bit of her original self has been lost to this new self she's been forced to create, yet hide it again. Diving now into the narcissism Kushida has. There are different types of narcissism, but essentially there are only two kinds of narcissism, grandiose narcissism and vulnerable narcissism. The difference between these two is that grandiose narcissism tends to be extroverted, aggressive, self-assured, and in need of validation from others. While the vulnerable narcissism is the opposite, introverted, hypersensitive, defensiveness, and anxiety. So with all of that in mind, how can we label Kushida's narcissism? Her case is interesting as her narcissism tends to take traits from different types or more. We will label the traits she takes from. Other types of Kushida's narcissistic traits from other types are Extroversion, grandiose, in need of validation from others, grandiose, neuroticism, vulnerable, antagonism, both, self-victimization, vulnerable. But at her core, all of this links to the focus on satisfying her own needs. Her neuroticism or self-loathing is subconscious to Kushida, as she states this as her darkness, and it deepens day by day. This is not simple as the stress of keeping up an image, but is also linked to her self-loathing. Why? 
The feeling of entitlement and self-importance is what feeds her excessive satisfaction or her hedonism to be more. But Kushida also has traits of a vulnerable narcissist. She tends to feel negative about herself in which she projects these feelings of self-loathing towards others who she thinks are below her. As I'll show here, we have examples of neuroticism and projection. Due to her subconscious realization that people would like the image she built more than her real self, which once again would further increase her self-loathing. We can label this as the narcissist paradigm. This follows a pattern of such excessive satisfaction, entitlement and self-importance, then to inferiority due to her own limits, then to conforming to her own limits and staying as an extroverted and sociable person, going to her fake self being more preferred by the people around, and then boom, right to subconscious realization that her real self would not be accepted to the people that prefer to her fake self, then to stress from keeping up a fake image and subconscious self-loathing from realization, then to excessive satisfaction to make up for the stress. But what makes her narcissism different from any other narcissism? In Koenji's case, his narcissism is an abnormal level of self-love and admiration. But as far as the novels show, he isn't shackled by other traits such as neuroticism. But as far as we know, he embodies his own pride and will go as far to protect his own pride and image that is built up by his self-love. Her self-victimization, which is a trait from vulnerable narcissism, is depicted in Year 1 Volume 1, Year 1 Volume 10, and Year 2 Volume 5. To avoid her image from being tainted to an extent, she takes the role of the victim in order to still maintain her perceived image by justifying that she was a victim, diverting the negative imagery to others. Her antagonism, a trait which is both grandiose and vulnerable, is depicted as an aggression to individuals who discovered her other side. This trait is depicted as a trigger to protect herself, but in Kushida's case, it is depicted as to protect her perceived image and her own excessive satisfaction. Alright, so we've discussed all that. However, I wanted to mention something. Even though Kushida is like that, it's not like she's going to remain the same. This is a series that has different themes and different cores, and one of these elements is growth. I've seen many students change over the series. Kushida is no exception. Kushida Kiko's development came late as she had been stuck in the narcissism paradigm, which we had discussed earlier. The immense amount of stress she goes through because of the drawbacks of keeping up the image she built, which is perceived by her peers and from her narcissism, which dug to her downfall. The importance of why she needed that breakdown in Year 2 Volume 5 is crucial for her to be able to emotionally reset herself. In Year 2 Volume 8, we see the fruition of these events as she stated she never enjoyed school trips. Still, after the events of Year 2 Volume 5, she began to enjoy the Hokkaido trip and also even began to realize that she has these underlying feelings that she feels less stress from keeping up a perceived image and started to use her own ability as a weapon for her future and to survive in society instead of having it as her own pleasure and satisfaction. I couldn't tell which Kushida was the real one. This is what Kiyotaka states in volume one. So to link that back, this poses the question, which is the real Kushida Kikyo? Is it the perceived image from her peers or the real self? The answer is they are both real. Kushida Kikyo, both aspects of what is generally the real her. Well, let's compare her and Kei Karizawa. In Karizawa's case, her image is falsified in order to protect herself, pretending to date the boy who is at the top of her class's social rank. In Kushida's case, she is holding back an aspect of herself. They may seem similar, but the difference is clear. What leads to the conclusion of both sides being the genuine thing about Kushida is that even Kiyotaka is not able to tell which side is the real her. The nuance of the question he asked himself is also an answer to us readers. Kushida's arc of growth has now begun, and let's see how this changes as the series moves forward.